Okay. Sir. Uh, can, can you please confirm if you can see the PowerPoint slides? Uh, yes, yes, we can, can see. Yeah, we can see. Yes, that, that's good. So I'm going to turn on the presentation mode. OK, so as you can see from the from the title, uh, the the paper that I'm currently working on, it's a pre registered report uh, on a on a topic of understanding researchers perceptions and experiences in the finance research replicability, a case study of Pacific Basin Finance Journal. And the team members along with me includes Dr. Daniel Kai from RMIT, Mark, Dr. Mark Brosnan from Bond, and Dr. Tim Hasu from Bond University. So team of four co-authors, we are embarking on this journey. Uh, currently, it's a pre-registered report, which will then lead into the full paper execution, and it will be submitted to the Pacific Basin Finance Journal for, for publication. Okay, so if any questions come during my presentation, I'm happy to take it during the presentation. Uh, you can hold on to your questions and we can address all of them at the end of the presentation. OK, so before I begin the actual presentation, I would like to uh, reconnect you at a at a sports level. So I'm originally from Pakistan and currently the Pakistan is in India. OK, so there was a warm welcome that Pakistani team received from India at the airport, which is shown in this video available at the YouTube, which was very uh, exciting to watch as a Pakistani uh, living in Australia and now delivering a talk virtually in, in India a, a couple of days after the Pakistani team arrived in India. So a lot of things happening. I hope that there is a start of a bright future that we can all uh, experience as we move on. And with that, I, I would like to ask you a question that do you know who are the kings of cricket at the moment? You can turn on your mic. And you can name if you know if you if you are fond of cricket. Uh, looking at the cricket stadiums in India, I believe all of the people in India play and watch cricket, but this may not be the case. Uh, but if anyone in the audience is a fond of cricket, then you may know who is the kings of cricket. Anyone in this uh, virtual room? It's a very tough question if you don't watch cricket. Uh, so many of us like uh, many people actually stop watching after such a retirement. So OK, yeah, that, that that's fine. So let, let me bring to you what because I still watch uh, a lot of cricket. I played a lot of cricket. I was growing up when I saw Sachin and Shivag. They used to yeah play a nice cricket. Uh, if I display it here the currently the the Virat Kohli from India is well renowned as a king and in Pakistan people also consider uh, barbarism as king who is standing as as the number one uh, batsman uh, in the ODI cricket okay so with that uh, our connectivity is there at a sports level and I would like to show that what's happening in terms of our academic collaboration so existing collaboration that I was able to have with Natesh uh, was through Professor Satesh Kumar. I presume he was the PhD supervisor of Natesh. So I came to know Natesh through Professor um, Satesh Kumar. So I wanted to highlight here that how we know each other. And this collaboration was very productive. We were able to publish a paper in British Journal of Management, which is uh, one of the top ranked journal. And uh, the title of the paper was Board Diversity and Form Performance, the Role of Contextual Variables. So this aligns with what research I do as Natesh was introducing. One of the core area that I do research is on the board diversity. And Natesh was doing his PhD on this, these issues, along with some uh, excellent papers coming on bibliometric analysis related to the same topic. So it was wonderful experience collaborating with such excellent uh, novice and early career researcher from India. So our collaboration is happening. So I believe that today's talk will open more avenues for future collaboration. The context of today's talk. So today's talk is based on a pre-registered report. It's not a full paper. I'm currently working on the full paper will be executed next year. 
So at this stage, I'm, I'm, I and my team is preparing a pre-registered report, which we will submit to the Pacific Basin Finance Journal. And that pre-registered report is based on an idea where we want to investigate the perceptions and experiences of finance researchers. And those finance researchers who have conducted or published replication studies in the Pacific Basin Finance Journal. So now what is pre-registered report? What is Pacific Basin Finance Journal? What are replication studies? So in my talk, I will highlight those in order to provide and share the publication opportunities to the Indian research community in the forms of uh, replication studies and pre-registered reports at the platform of Pacific Basin Finance Journal. And this will uh, help us together as a global finance research community to contribute towards the responsible research uh, practices are responsible science in general. This talk is aligned to my vice president of communications role and University of Wollongong node leader role at the International Society of Pitching Research for Responsible Science and Inspired Center for Responsible Science, respectively. So I'm holding these positions in this global network, and I would like you to, uh, uh, to join this network. It's free of cost. You can go to the web page and you can become a, a member. Currently, we have 1,000 plus members from 78 different countries, including India, uh, 300 plus universities, 400 plus talks and events have already been organized, 3,500 plus users of this web page with 6,000 plus research ideas or research pitches have been registered with this platform. So, so I would encourage all of you to, to join and have, have a look at the website. There are a lot of in, important resources available free of cost. What I have to discuss in this presentation, uh, it's not a very uh, traditional or conventional paper presentation. As I said, it's a pre-registered report. There are a lot of uh, background information like what is Pacific Basin Finance Journal. Some of you might have already published, whereas others may not know what this journal is all about. Uh, you may all know, and we can briefly walk through it. What are different initiatives this, this journal is taking uh, in terms of pre-registered report initiative, in terms of replication studies initiative, and in between I will talk about what are different forms of analysis, including reproduction and replication. And then in the end, I will discuss what, what is the proposal that I'm, we are putting together as a team, which will be published as a pre-registered report in Pacific Basin Finance Journal, hopefully if everything goes well by the end of this year or early next year, and then the full study will be executed after that. So we are currently preparing that pre-registered report. And at the end of today's talk, I will discuss what we are aiming to achieve. So let's discuss about Pacific Basin Finance Journal, PBFJ in abbreviation. It's an ABDC A rank journal. So ABDC ranking is very renowned internationally, in particular in Australia. If we publish papers in ABDC A ranked or A star, uh, it has a lot of rating. So you, from India, I know scholars are aware of these rankings. So Pacific Basin Finance Journal is ABDC A. In terms of Shimago uh, journal ranking, SJR, scientific journal ranking, uh, it's considered a Q1, which is uh, the, the top, top quantile. Okay, so from, from this, we see it, it's, it's a well-renowned journal in Australia and in international finance community. What it publishes, it publishes papers that use the Asia-Pacific region as a context where China, India, Thailand, Malaysia, and these countries are part of that. So if papers are using data from these countries and have a context based on Asia Pacific region, this paper, this journal uh, welcome those papers, but not on any topic, the topic that are linked to financial economics, like asset pricing, corporate finance, financial decision making, including financial disclosures, et cetera. So this journal publishes papers on that. If you work on those ideas in an Asia Pacific region, uh, this journal is a, is a very good outlet to publish your paper. And you can see the impact factor is also very high. It's 4.6, uh, so it meets all the uh, indicators of a very good uh, to be to be considered as a good journal. 
who is the editor of this journal? The editor of this journal is Professor Robert Farr from University of Queensland, uh, from Queensland, Australia. I have uh, a connectivity with Professor Robert Farr because he's the founder of the Inspires Network that I in, uh, encouraged all of you to join uh, at the start. Uh, he's a founder of that network, so I'm connected to Professor Robert from a from a long time, and then I was invited to become a vice president of communications in that network. And you can see some of the snapshots. The first uh, in-person interaction that I had with Professor Robert was in 2015 February. I was in the third year of my PhD at that time, so I pitched my uh, second uh, research question out of my PhD thesis in 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 front of him and other PhD students and expert panels. And after that, we had a lot of interactions. I was given a best uh, pitch uh, award by him in one of the snapshots, and I visited his office to to learn more about his uh, pitching research framework. And just recently, I traveled to Norway to attend World Finance Conference, so I was able to have an in-person meeting with him just last month. And I was I was very happy to see a, a, a large number of Indian scholars traveling to Norway. And I was very surprised at the same time where many institutions are facing funding constraint. I could see Indian scholars were still getting those funds uh, to travel and, and have those collaborations and feedback on their papers. So that's, that, that was very good to see. My connectivity with Pacific Basin Finance Journal is as an author and as a, as a reviewer. So I have published two papers in this journal one paper is under review, and that paper which is under review is with, uh, uh, I think, another five scholars from India. So, so, so that's uh, worth highlighting again here that uh, my collaboration with Indian research community is growing, as as per the time. And as a reviewer, I have reviewed uh, nine papers from Pacific Basin Finance Journal, and two papers I'm currently reviewing. Uh, they are in progress. And one uh, one thing that that uh, may be considered as a positive thing for Pacific Basin Finance Journal is they give uh, one hundred dollar U.S. dollar to the reviewer as an honorarium. So if you publish in this journal, you are invited to review a paper. You may get some financial incentive to to review a paper as well. But but to to claim that incentive, you have to review a paper uh, quickly. So they give a timeline. Let's say forty days. So within those 40 days, you have to review a paper if you have to get that financial incentive. So in that way, this journal is also good that uh, you get timely reviews because reviewers have an incentive to, uh, to, to gain through the timely reviews. Okay, so what this journal is doing, uh, this journal is taking a lot of interesting initiatives, including the pre-registered report initiative, which I'm going to discuss now, and the presentation that I'm I'm delivering today on a proposal which is basically uh, um, following this pre-registered report initiative. And why this pre-registered report uh, is important and what it is, according to Professor Campbell Harvey, who was uh, the president of American Finance Association, and he was the chief editor of the Journal of Finance uh, in, the, in the past. So what he says, he said in his presidential address, in the American Finance Association in 2017, and that presidential address is published in Journal of Finance. He says that top uh, national conferences and journals in finance should follow the lead of other fields and, and accept registered reports. So basically those pre-registered reports. So in 2017, he was saying, this should happen in our finance journals. We should have pre-registered or registered reports. What those reports does, they, they ask the researchers to provide the proposals, and those proposals will give details about the research methodology. So what data they are going to use, what methods they will apply, and a brief uh, literature review stuff and research question. Okay, So in that way, they lock uh, the, the, the method, the data, the sample, and, and then they register that with the journal. And after the registration happened, they are allowed to execute the full uh, project uh, as closely as possible to the pre-registered plan. So in that way, you can see the, that the data manipulation is less likely to happen 
the the uh, variations in the methodology to get significant results is less likely to happen you know if you change little bit in the in your codes results can become significant or insignificant results can change from positive to negative so in that way if we publish some false positive or false negative results later on it will raise an issue of the reproducibility and replicability of the of the finance research so with that in mind pacific basin finance journal they uh, they launched the uh, the pre-registration report in uh, uh, the the platform which is divided into four phases. The first phase is about the expression of interest. The second phase is about the pitch, the idea, which is based on a very short format, which I will show uh, in a few moments. The third phase is a pre-registered report, and that pre-registered report in itself is published in, in PBFJ, you can see here. And then in the fourth phase, the full study is executed, and that is published as well. So in this pre-registered report, uh, you get two publications in Pacific Basin Finance Journal. So what happens in EUI phase? Uh, you, you make a team of at least three scholars. One is very highly experienced. The other two are novice researchers. They can be PhD students or early career researchers, researchers who have completed their PhD in less than five years. And they are affiliated from at least two different institutions. These are the, uh, the optimal requirement of the team, but if there is any deviation, uh, that can be possible if the editor uh, approves that. So submit an AOI directly via an email to the chief editor, like uh, Professor Robert Pfaff, and, and he will give a green signal or he will decline the EOI. So if you get a green signal, you move on to the pitch phase. So pitch is just 1,000 words where you cover the core items of your research project and you submit it, you receive uh, feedback, you revise it, and, 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 and then if the editor is not happy, it is declined. If the editor is happy, it will be considered as pre-in-personal, in-principle uh, acceptance. So you move to the next stage. So now you may be wondering, what is this pitch? Some of you might have uh, already come across through social media, through your research. But if you don't know what is pitch, pitch is a, a pitch is a uh, is a very structured methodological uh, template which you can see on the screen at the moment. So it has four, three, two, one. So first four items are the preliminaries, which are working title, research question, the key papers, the motivation of the paper. Then the three are the idiots. So idiots are idea, data, and tools. So what idea you're proposing, what data you'll be using, which tools you'll be applying to test your idea, test your hypothesis. Then the two includes what's new, what's the novelty of your research project. So who cares? So then the next question is, so what? Who cares? Who will benefit out of your project? What will be the policy implications, social implications? And then one, which is the bottom line, is the contribution of your paper. You see, most of the papers are rejected from the top tier finance journals or from bottom tier finance journals because of the weak contribution. Um, uh, the contribution is not there in the literature. And then there are other considerations as well. So this is the pitch template, which is required in the pre-registered report phase two. You may be thinking how to fill this template if you if you if you have never done so so there are cues like the guidelines available uh, the questions for each of the item in the pitch template for the pre-registered report like from item a to item k on the first column how to fill that all the details are given uh, which can be followed prepared submitted to the editor either declined or uh, get some review, positive feedback, and it moves on to the pre-IPA. Once you get a pre-IPA, you move on to the pre-registered report. And this is where our project is, the project where we are trying to understand the experiences and perceptions of the finance researchers who have conducted replication studies and published them in PBFJ. We are preparing a pre-registered report. We have already received a pre-IPA on the proposal. So now we are putting together a pre-registered report. What is this pre-registered report? It is the front end of your paper. It is the plan of your method. Uh, it is a guide that you will be using 
to execute the full project. As I discussed when I was talking about Professor Campbell Harvey's presidential address. So if you prepare a pre-registered report, you submit it, it will go through a review process. And it, if it satisfies all the requirements, it will uh, be published as in personal accept uh, in the PBFJ. And then uh, authors move on to the phase four, which is full study execution, where the plan is there, it is published. You can't change a plan now. You, you follow that plan, get the data, access the data, analyze the data using your plan, whatever you 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 thought it will be uh, answering your research questions, uh, testing your research hypothesis if there are any, depending on your research type. So you execute the project, collect the data, analyze the data, prepare a full paper like a normal paper, and then submit it to PBFJ for a review. So the reviewer will have a look, uh, compare how closely you have followed the plan, uh, if there are some variations, have you uh, appropriately justified those variations? And then if the reviewer is satisfied, editor is satisfied, uh, it gets a final unconditional accept. It is published in PBFJ as a full study. So that's the pre-registered uh, initiative, and this is what we are following in our project. Okay, So you may be wondering, has anyone done it? It looks quite a lot of work. You have to submit EOI, then you have to prepare a pitch. It goes through a process. You have to then pre-register your report, a plan. You can't change a plan. If you change a plan, it should be reasonable change. Then it goes to a review process. Then it is published. But you get two publications. That's first thing. Publications in PBFJ, which is considered good. You may be thinking, has anyone done it? So there is a first uh, report that is published in February 2023. So that was a pre-registered report. I'm not part of that, but I know the authors. And then they have already published a full study following their plan. So this model is available. If anyone is, is interested in pre-registered report, you can have a look at this report and a study and see how they have done it. And, and you may want to then use this experience in your own pre-registered report uh, and study. There is another, you may say that one sample is not good enough to learn. Is there any other sample? Another pre-registered report is available. The study may be still going on. It's not published yet. And hopefully if our pre-registered report is approved by uh, PBFJ editor, it will be available hopefully by early uh, next year. You may want to have a look at that as well. So with that pre-registered report understanding, uh, there is a publication opportunity for all of you to explore. Now I want you to uh, have some discussion uh, on different forms of reanalysis, including reproduction and replication. So before I do that, I want to quickly touch about what is responsible science. So if science is a creation of new knowledge, a new discovery, uh, solving a, a problem through, through some discovery, if that is science, then what is responsible science? Responsible science is creating new knowledge that is reliable or credible, useful or relevant, means industry can apply it, and unbiased and independent. So there is no researcher's bias involved in that. So that's responsible science. It is well uh, promoted and established that pre-registered reports can lead to such a knowledge creation which is responsible because there is less of a data scooping happening, um, the, the manipulation of the uh, data and the code to get significant results. And that is partly driven by the journals because they want uh, authors to publish the significant results that confirm the traditional theories. So, so that's lead to p-hacking and publication bias. But now the talks are happening that how we can change that culture. If the authors have followed uh, the, the solid plan 
solid method, the data collection, data analysis, all the things are very robust. The reviewer is happy. If the results are insignificant, the journals should not be shy and decline that paper just because it has insignificant results, whereas research in the past have shown significant results. So that's what uh, is responsible science. It has three pillars, as I have discussed in the in the in the definition. And and if we don't have a responsible research practice, responsible science, uh, it will lead to the replication failure. So later on, if someone wants to do similar research, uh, they may not find similar results, or they may want to do same research, same data, same code, same method. They still don't find uh, the same results. So this can happen if there is irresponsible research practices happening. So what are the different forms of reanalysis? According to Welsh 2019, there are five different forms of reanalysis which can uh, increase the credibility and reliability of the research. So these are the five forms, reproduction, extension, update, replication, re-examination. So here are the definitions. If you need to understand uh, these definitions, there are three criteria. Uh, at least these three criteria can help us classify the reanalysis into one of these five categories: the population, the sample, the code. For example, rep what is reproduction? Reproduction is, let's say, uh, Natesh and I, with other co-authors, we have published paper is paper in BJM, uh, British Journal of Management. What what do reproduction means? to an other researcher. They go and check our paper, collect the same sample from the same population and apply the same code. This is what is reproduction. And if they can get the same results, so it means our research is reproducible. If they get different results, then it means there is some issue in the, in the sample or the code of the original paper. Because if the, if the, New researcher can get the same code, same sample, the result should be same. Okay. So that's reproduction. Then there are two other uh, forms, extension and update. So in extension and update, the population and code remains the same, just the sample is slightly different. What do I mean by slightly different? In extension, what researchers does, if the sample period is, let's say, uh, sample period is from 2010 to 2019, the researcher want to extend that sample period from 2019 to another three years, 2023. Want to see if the data is from 2010 to 2023 instead of until 2019, do the results hold or not? So that's an extension. By update, the data is only taken in a new time period within the same population and the same code is applied. What do I mean by that? Continuing with the same example, if the sample period in the original paper is from 2010 to 2019, the researcher want to update that finding using a new data, and the new data will be from the same population, but starting from 2020 to 2023. Just want to see if the COVID has changed the relationship that was examined in the pre-COVID period, for example. Okay. So, so that's an update. And then the replication. Uh, the replication is uh, the population and sample is slightly different. Okay. But the code is same. What do I mean by that? If Natesh and I have published paper in BGM using data from Indian population, sample from Indian listed companies, and we have used uh, a code, someone may want to test it in, in let's say, China or, or in, in Pakistan. They want to have a population, which is Pakistan or China. They want to extract this similar, slightly different sample, still a listed companies in Pakistan and China, but apply the same methodology, same coding, like same econometric technique. They want to see if the results in a new setting, new, different, slightly different sample and population, can be replicated. And finally is re-examination where the population and sample remains the same, just the code is changed. For example, uh, if someone have published paper uh, in Indian market, uh, 
using pooled OLS technique, a researcher may want to re-examine using the same sample from Indian market, but change the methodology from O pooled OLS to form fixed effect at GMM approach and provide justification why this new approach can give uh, more reliable results. Okay, so what can happen? In the first technique, reproduction, the result must be the same. If results are not same, then there is an issue in the original paper. Whereas in other forms of uh, uh, reanalysis, the result can be can be similar or different. Okay, so different results can also be possible. But how we interpret that? Do we tag it as an issue in the original paper, or do we tag it an issue? Uh, a, a, a different result is because of difference in sample or difference in code that the researchers has has applied in other forms of reanalysis, including extension, update, replication, reexamination. So what, what, what is the takeaway from this? Always preserve your data and code. Make sure you have uh, kept a copy of that in your uh, in your folders, preserved it in different places so that later on if someone challenges your findings, you have data and codes which you can share if it is needed. And if it is not a proprietary data, sometimes data is proprietary, we can't share. And check top tier journals. They they have a policy like if you go to Journal of Finance, Review of Financial Studies, Journal of Financial Economics, the top top tier finance journals, they have data and code sharing policies. If researchers publish paper, they have to share the data and code as per the policy. Whatever policy says, they have to abide by that. So it means if you need to publish, then your research should be able to be reproduced using the same code and data should be able to the other researchers should be able to replicate, update, extend or re-examine. In different fields, sometimes the term replication is inclusive of both replication and reproduction. Okay, so based on this table, uh, the first row is a reproduction and the fourth form of reanalysis is replication. So in, in some uh, fields, replication, if someone is saying replication, it can include both reproduction and replication. I like this term reproducibility. It's just like uh, brushing your teeth. It's good for your health, for your look, but it takes time and efforts. So every morning you have to do that. After, before going to bed, you have to do that. Someone may want to do it even after having any meal. So it takes time, but it's good for you. Once you learn it, it becomes a habit. So once you do it for, let's say, 40 days in the, your childhood, then you don't need to even think about it. You have a meal, you go and brush your teeth. It's, it's just part of your kinesthetic approach. The deepest truth in scientific knowledge comes from the ability to replicate empirical findings directly and independently. If we can't replicate the empirical findings independently and directly, what does it mean? will anyone trust on my finding like if my my findings are relevant to the industry but they cannot be replicated or reproduced then there is no use of uh, that finding no one is going to apply that in their practice if it is relevant to in that context so now it's your turn if you have your mobile phone i want you to scan uh, this qr code if you don't have a mobile phone, you are using your laptop. You go to slido.com and enter uh, this uh, this code and then the passcode if it is required. There are four questions. The, the questions are related to how much attention is given to reproduction and replication in finance research. How much of the finance research can be reproduced, replicated? So once you log in, uh, to, to slido.com using this code or QR code, you should be able to see those four questions. This may be a test if you were paying attention to the definitions of reproduction and replication. I have to turn off my teacher mode and turn on my researcher mode, but not as a reviewer. So let's Let's have a look what we find so far from six participants. The first question was about how much attention do you feel reproduction? Reproduction is same data, same sample, same population. Do you think it's getting much attention? Most of you think that it's not getting much attention. 
67% are saying that. So if it is not happening, then it means whatever research is happening is just happening. No one is trying to reproduce and with a skeptical eye or maybe just want to learn how the authors have produced those results. So you can see not much is happening there. What about replication? Replication is you change a slightly use different sample and population, but same code, same method uh, in terms of econometric technique. Uh, that, is that happening? So again, most of you think that is not happening. So then is the responsible research practices happening or not? Are the research practices irresponsible? If we are not doing replication and reproduction, we can't really uh, uh, have, have a comment on that. So then I following up on that, I asked, in your opinion, what proportion of published results in finance research is exactly reproducible? I mean, same data, same sample, same population. Do you think that, uh, how much proportion do you think results can be the same? So again, most of you, uh, like 20%, uh, you believe that 20% can be reproducible. So that's again a very alarming situation. If as a finance researcher or a business school researcher, we believe that uh, only uh, reproducibility using the same data, same sample, same code is just 20% or 40%, that's an alarming situation. Then again, when it comes to a replication, because here results can be slightly different or similar because we are changing the population, uh, but similar with similar characteristics, we're changing the sample. Uh, yeah, so most of you think that 50% uh, it can be uh, replicated, which is a, a reasonable uh, situation to have. Okay, so thank you so much for your active participation in this. So that was your views. Now let's see what researchers are showing. In many different fields, uh, the researchers have shown there is a replication crisis, which includes both reproduce, reproduction and replication based on our definition that we had. There is a credibility crisis, including in the fields of medicine, management, psychology, accounting, and now in financial economics, uh, in finance, people are, people are raising that issue. For example, uh, look at the research by who at all 2020, uh, Harvey at all. Both of these studies says that uh, the finance research uh, uh, cannot be reproducible or cannot be replicated. Whereas just a recent paper by Jensen et al 2023 provided a contradictory view, say that yes, finance research can be replicated and the replication rate is 82.4%. You can see now there will be more discussion happening. Is it replica, rep, finance research uh, can be replicated or cannot be replicated? So with that, we need more replication studies, more reanalysis uh, to happen to contribute to this discussion so that we can reach to a, a consensus that finance research is having a crisis or is not having a crisis. If it is having a crisis, we need to sit together to solve that crisis. So first thing is recognition of crisis. Next step is to find a solution how we can solve it. So with that, uh, different journals are taking those initiatives to promote reanalysis and Pacific Basin Finance Journal is one of them which has provided a special section where replication studies can be published. And by PBFJ replication studies, it includes both reproduction and replication. Before that have a look at what's happening in other fields, replication studies in business and management, uh, very low instances as per the research policy journal, replication studies in international business, again, not much happening. This paper is published in JIPS, which is one of the uh, top ranked journal. Just recently, 2022, the paper says that we need more of those studies in international business. Replication studies in public economics. This was a call in 2010. Um, after that, how much this journal have really taken that to to next level? We can have a look, but that's happening in public economics. Replication studies in finance. Critical Finance Review, one of the top journal, uh, has has a has a focus on uh, replicability and replication of the studies. They primarily publish papers which provide a critique of the previous studies. So they, their focus is 
more on, on reanalysis. Whereas PPFJ, they publish journal uh, general papers like the regular papers, and they have also created a new section on replication. So that's different from critical finance review because their focus is on critiques, on reanalysis. But PBFJ has a new section on replication in addition to their regular issues. So what, what happens in, in PBFJ replication studies? The authors are required to replicate uh, the findings of a, of a top-ranked paper published in, uh, in, 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 in top-ranked journal. So there, there, are gen, there are different guidelines. The paper should be short. It has a team of three, at least three authors, uh, one experienced author, two novice researchers, PhD students, and early career researchers. Those uh, early career researchers will independently execute the replication, and then they will come together under the mentor to, to find the consensus. Only the core evidence needs to be reproduced in the, in the original article. Not all the analysis needs to be reproduced. All the results needs to be reproduced. Just a core evidence. And what will be the uh, article that is selected for reproduction and replication uh, that is published in three, uh, at least three top tier finance journal which are listed there. Important studies published there in the past three to five years, and they have used uh, US data. So, so that is encouraged to be to be used as a paper to be reproduced and then replicated in a new setting, and that setting is Asia Pacific region. And then uh, it goes under review, and if everything is uh, going as planned and meets the requirement, it will be uh, published in PBFJ. So the authors are also required to have a positive engagement with the authors of the published paper they are trying to reproduce and replicate to get the code and, and data. If they get the code and data that makes their half of the job uh, done, then they just need to replicate uh, those findings in an Asia-Pacific setting. But if the authors don't get uh, data from the original authors, uh, then it becomes a double of a task. The authors will first collect the US data, same data as it is in the published paper from the same population, use the same code, they will construct same code based on what the authors have described in the paper and see if the results are uh, same or similar to what is published in the paper. So that's the first task. And the second task is to then uh, collect the data in the Asia Pacific setting. So there are three phases, EOI phase, then the pre-registered pitch proposal phase, and then the uh, review of the full study. So I'm not going into details, but uh, in EOI, as it was in the pre-registered report initiative, there are different criteria needs to be uh, responded and submitted to the uh, to the journal, and then there will be decision made. Either you proceed to the phase two, or uh, you you are declined to to proceed. Then, if you are proceeding to the phase two, you will prepare a pitch that that template that I have shown. Uh, using these uh, different queues now because these queues are for replication studies, not for pre-registered reports. So we'll use these queues and prepare a pitch. It will be submitted at the PBFJ website. There will be zero submission fee if uh, the reviewer and the editor, they are happy uh, based on the report here. The, this report provide what reviewer will be looking at. They will give a green signal. You proceed to the uh, next phase, which is uh, a full study uh, replication study phase. You are given six months uh, to then uh, uh, execute your your plan. You reproduce the uh, top tier finance journal core finding. You replicate those findings in a Asia Pacific region. Put it together. Submit that manuscript. It's a short manuscript, along with the data set and the code at the PBFJ website, and it will go through a review process. The reviewer will be given the code, the data set, and they will test on their own and give a, a, a recommendation to the editor. And this is how the paper will look like. It is just 2,500 words, uh, three tables. The first is descriptive statistics for the two markets. First is US, as is in the original paper. Second is in the Asia-Pacific setting. And then 
table two is reproduction of the US sample, the core results. Table three is the replication of the results in the Asia Pacific setting. And the appendix will include the pitch that was approved in the phase two, and the online appendix will include the data in the code. My own experience, I have done the replication um, in 2019. It started in 2019. And you can say PPFJ launched replication studies in 2019. So I was one of the uh, early researchers who embarked on this journey along with my team of co-authors from University of Wollongong. So we uh, we selected a paper published in Journal of Financial Economics on a topic of economic policy uncertainty and mergers and acquisitions. We contacted the authors. We could not get the data and code. Then uh, we looked at their sampling and data sources. We, we do not have the those databases and data sources with us. Uh, we had a collaborator from another university. We requested that collaborator, if, you, if your policy allows us to use that data, we can acknowledge you in our, uh, in our paper's acknowledgement. And if you check the paper uh, in the acknowledgement, we have acknowledged our collaborator is not a co-author but just in the acknowledgement he was able to share that data so we replicate we reproduce us uh, results using similar data set we could not produce the same sample we could not have very same uh, model like variables we could not have very like exactly the same uh, code because we we have to just rely on what is described in the paper following that whatever we could get we, we run the regression. Our sample was different. The coefficients we got, regression coefficient, they were slightly different, but the, they give the same meaning. The, the result was uh, economic policy uncertainty uh, reduces mergers and acquisitions in the US. So we confirmed their finding, but with dif slightly different sample, slightly different code, but uh, we, we say that their findings still hold in the US context. And then we selected China as a as a Asia Pacific region. Uh, we collected uh, a, a data, tried to come up with similar model, and we show that the results hold in China as well. Economic policy uncertainty reduces mergers and acquisitions. So there was uh, an economic significance difference in both reproduction and the replication, which we have explained in the paper. But overall, we confirm the US findings published in Journal of Financial Economics, acknowledge some of the challenges and uh, differences that we had in our sample and the uh, model. So what happens? Uh, this, this, this is my experience uh, in, in that replication study. Uh, we had data issues. We could not get data from the original authors, and I have explained that uh, in, in the previous slide. So this is uh, my experience in brief. I haven't gone through a full experience. Like it, it was a study that started in particular day, and it took almost uh, more more than one month, uh, one year to complete the project. So what that experience has to be captured in detail. But in brief, this is my experience. There were challenges. There were opportunities as well to work with a senior mentor. I was early career researcher at that time, work with an other early career researcher to develop that uh, collaboration and publish in a Pacific Basin Finance Journal. So those were the benefits as well. So there were challenges, there were benefits. So that is my experience in brief. What are the experiences in depth of all those researchers who have conducted replication studies and published in Pacific Basin Finance Journal? To systematically capture that, we have come up with a proposal that we want to do and we want to capture those experiences and those perceptions from those researchers who have conducted those studies and published in PBFJ. So this is the research question we are uh, trying to answer. What are the motivations and experiences of researchers in conducting the PBFJ replication study? And how do they view the three phase process, which is EOI, the pitch, and the actual uh, replication study? How do they view? What are their experiences in that? Do they want to have some changes in that? So this research question we want to answer. The key papers that we are using are, are, are listed here. 
based on which we are building the motivation of our study. Uh, the first paper is from Professor Robert Faf uh, on responsible science matters. The second and third paper are from Professor Campbell Harvey, and they are on uh, on the theme of replication and reanalysis of the finance research, the issues that are happening, how we can move the financial economic research in a in a right direction. So unlike other finance journals, <clears throat> the replication studies initiatives are very less happening in financial economics. And you can see only critical finance review, which has a focus on critiques. Apart from that, Pacific Basin Finance is one of the finance journals uh, that is having a new section on that. So why this culture is missing? Why not many journals are creating those sections where asking researchers to reproduce and replicate uh, the existing research findings? Because Professor Campbell Harvey believes that because most of the financial economics data, when it comes to asset pricing, stock price data, it is publicly available, so there is no need for replication. So, so the data is there. No one should uh, try to manipulate the data because others can easily get the data and and replicate and and then show to the world whether the uh, the results hold or do not hold. Whereas it may not be this uh, may not be true in all the situations. Like I explained, we faced a lot of data issues. We could not get the US data uh, straight away. We had to then uh, collect it through our collaborator and then acknowledge that in our paper. So anyways, so one is the data availability is there, so no need for replication. Second is the editorial support. Not many journals are having those uh, options available for the authors to publish replication studies. And why this is the case? Because replication studies take longer time for the editor to, to go through the process and it attracts less citations. Do it really happen? My paper have received more, I think 25 citations so far, which is which is quite fine for a replication study to receive that citation. Uh, does it really happen uh, in market? What about other replication studies that are have, that are published in PBFJ? How many citations they have received? What uh, those researchers believe? Do they think that this was a time taking exercise? Do they think the benefits exceed the cost or the cost exceeds the benefit? This is what we are trying to uh, collect systematically in this project. The third challenge why the replication culture is not promoting in financial economics is the papers that an author publish, like replication study, they do not get the same weight as an original paper in the promotion and uh, probation or tenure track decisions. This is in the past, pre-2017, but now with more and more journals, like I have seen replication studies in uh, our pre-registered report or replication studies in um, uh, Journal of uh, International Business, the JIPS, if those big journals are coming up with that, uh, we'll see more weight is given in the promotion decisions and the tenure decisions to those studies. So PBFJ, so far 47 papers have been published and it involves 112 authors. So it's the right time to go to those uh, authors and systematically capture their experiences and perceptions about the replication studies and what, how do they view the three phases of the PBFJ replication studies. I'm not going to idea, I think I have already captured that. Just briefly about the data, what we will do. I'm mindful about the time. So just a couple of more minutes and then I will wind up the session and I will open it up for questions and answers. So the data, how the data will look like, we will obtain a log file from the editor of the PBFJ, Professor Robert Pfaff, and that log file will contain this information, like the EOI completion phase, uh, the phase when it was completed, the pitch phase completion date, what study the authors replicated, in the top tier finance journals already published, what uh, Asia Pacific setting they have used, uh, who are the team members, and what is the current status? Is it uh, in progress, uh, and revise and resubmit, conditionally accepted, or it's published? So here is a sample of my own paper that I have shown previously. We'll we, 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 we have that log file. And if you go to the PBFJ website, you can also uh, use this link and collect all the replication studies that are 
publicly available available means they have already uh, published so that is another source from where we can get the author names and details and then we can contact them uh, through the email uh, to participate in the survey and the interview uh, we expect a, a a very high response rate uh, here I'm putting a bit conservative uh, approach for greater than 50% participation, but we believe we will have much higher than that. And there is a reason for that belief because this project is supported by the PBFJ editor. We can't embark on this project. We have to have the support. So that support is available and we have a, a very good network with the authors who have published those uh, PBFJ studies. So that's another connectivity is there. They should be uh, happy to participate and the timing that it will take for the survey and the interview is less than 30 minutes uh, uh, together. It's 15 minutes for survey, 30 minutes for the interview that we are planning at this stage. Uh, we hope that this will encourage a high response rate. The tool that we are designing is survey. We have already uh, drafted it with nine sections, which you can see. Um, and we have received feedback from some uh, established finance researchers from Australia. Those who have some experience in replication studies and they are they have published top tier finance journals. So we sent them the draft and asked for their opinion and, and comments if we want to make any changes. So after that, uh, our survey is now waiting for the ethical clearance because it involves human subject. So we need to have an ethical clearance. Uh, once it is there, we can then uh, put it in the pre-registered report, submit to the PBFJ. It will be, uh, if it is published, then execute that by going to the uh, the authors and collecting the data. And and after that, there will be a follow-up interview. Uh, the, the survey will be conducted through Qualtrics and the interview will be conducted through online platform like the Microsoft Teams we are having today, and the transcription service will also be used to transcribe the interview. With artificial intelligence, I think we can save a lot of money there, but if we still have to pay, we, we will apply for some funds at our internal uh, funding schemes at our university. We'll use Stata for close-ended survey question to analyze, and for open-ended, uh, we'll use NVivo. What's new in this project? Um, the new aspect in this project is uh, we are following a pre-registered approach. Not many people have done it. I have shown only one project is completed following this approach from PBFJ. Another project only have a pre-registered report. We believe we are among those pioneers taking on this one of the responsible research practice registering our plan and then executing it. Once we register the survey, we can't really make the change in that survey. Yes, we if it is reasonable, we, we can request, but not a substantial change to confirm the way we want to confirm the research question or the hypothesis. We can't do that. So this is novel aspect. And we are the first to check, to examine the experiences of researchers who have experience of uh, publishing or conducting replication studies. So that's that's a new angle we are bringing. No one have done that research. So what matters, like why, why it is important? As I have been keep saying, through this research project, what we want to achieve is, is, is a discussion starter or the conversation starter, like I'm having today. You can see it's not a traditional paper presentation. It's more of a discussion. And the way I presented the proposal is more of a discussion in a very unconventional way. I unpacked different areas, provided you different publication opportunities, and uh, guided you in a way that uh, I tried to inspire you to do some research uh, which can promote the responsible research practices. And if we can all do that, then the trust we can build with the stakeholders will increase and they can apply our uh, our findings and, and make this world a better place to live for. So with that, uh, I think I will conclude uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you so much for your listening and for your patience. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, any feedback, comments, I'm happy to take it into my consideration. Thank you so much.